れが佐藤。僕はうち。わかりましたかはい。That is a saying you hear a lot in Japan this yesterday. Because yesterday was set the moon in Japan. And in today's episode of Jin Japan, we're going to talk about set the moon. But it's a quite interesting holiday. Where you get to eat big, big, big roll sushi. And it's delicious if you can well make it right or buy the expensive one. And there's also a custom of throwing beans at people with masks. So, it's kind of fun holiday. Except if you are an Oni. Yeah, if you're a demon, it's not a fun holiday. You get beans for Oni. So, that's gonna be the theme of today's episode of Jin Japan. Oh, Tainu Shimi Hazuda! So, yesterday was the 3rd of February. Ooh, this year is going quick already. And the 3rd of February, not always the 3rd of February, but this sort of marks, in the Japanese calendar, the start of spring. Winter is over and spring has become, and for me, spring was rain. Mm, this, yeah, it still rained all day in Okinawa, so that was pretty sad. But the sort of days when the seasons change, the sort of Japanese mind f e t i n g you. And some of the ways of historical thinking was these sort of days, well, demons could come out. It's sort of the change, right? They could be born. The demons, well, they bring bad luck. So that means the people have to have a holiday to not get bad luck from demons, but instead get good luck. And this is when we get the sort of. Soto wa oni. Fuku wa uchi. So fuku wa. So fuku is luck, and uchi is like inside the family. So, fuku wa uchi, like the family's got good luck. And oni, demon. Oni wa soto. So, oni, so the demon is outside. He's not in the family, he's away. So, you throw beans at the oni to make him go away. So, so your family doesn't want to get bad luck, you want the good luck. And how do you get the good luck while you eat? Ehomaki. So, ehomaki is big, big roll sushi. So, it's a big, big sushi roll, a really big sushi roll. And yesterday I tried to make Okinawa food. So, Okinawa, like, ehomaki. It's basically, I just put some ingredients that were like Okinawa ish and put them in and tried to make it. Didn't really have one of the sushi rollers, so I used tin foil and it was okay. But it was a bit, well, hard to eat. Probably would have been better to buy some. But it was good fun. So, looking at actually some statistics of this, is how many people actually celebrate this holiday. Recent poll done by a popular weather company, Weather News, and only about 8% of people from that survey actually make s their own. The majority of the people either go out on the day and buy it or order it beforehand. Because you see in these sort of days, like coming up to this holiday in convenience stores, there's lots of like orders you can order these ehomaki. What I find quite weird is like, why are you ordering like onigiri or like sushi? Like days in advance. But on this day, it's also really good to look out for some sushi shops. Like the famous sushi shops have really big ones, they're the best ones to buy. I think. When I was in Osaka, this was going on. I bought, ah, I think this was 2000 yen. An expensive one, and it was really good. These little things, so it's okay to spend. But there's a certain way of making them, and I got this wrong, and I feel really bad now. So I previously did an episode on the Shits of Fukushima. The Seven Lucky Gods of Japan. So, the Seven Lucky Gods actually have a connection to Ehomaki. You have to make it appropriate to the Seven Lucky Gods, right? You want to get the luck. Who do you get the luck from? Well, in Japan, you get the luck from the Seven Lucky Gods, Chicho Fukujin. And that means an ingredient for each of the Seven Lucky Gods. I don't. I've got the ingredients here, but I can't remember which ones go with which gods, so we can kind of play a guessing game. If you've listened to the previous episode, well, I did on the Seven Lucky Gods, so go back and listen to that and come back here and play the game of which food goes to the guard. So, first up, we got Koya Tofu. Well, it's like a quite hard tofu you get. You normally buy it in a supermarket and it's already dried, so you gotta put it in the microwave to make it spongy. So, tofu. Next, you got Campion. Campion and Nando. It's like a fruit. You don't really get it in Europe. And you dry it out and bake it, you like dry it in soy sauce, and then you put that in sushi. It's like long strips. It's quite tasty. Next, shiitake. 
So these are round mushrooms. You probably see these in like Japanese food, when you have nabe, hot pot, the mushrooms with like the crush on top, they look super cool. Next up we have kyori, cucumber. I uh, gotta have some vegetables in there. Next, next up is tamagoyaki. So we have eggs, fried eggs. Like the Japanese style omelette cut up in strips. And now we have ango. Mm, ango is like an eel. But it's not eel like unagi, it's like a red eel. Unagi is like dark black. I haven't actually tried ango on its own, so I don't really know what it tastes like. And this last one we have kembu. So, template's a weird pink powder with like processed fish. It's one of those weird ones here in Japan. Like, how do they make that? I really don't know. It's like grated up fish and somehow they make it pink. So you gotta have pink colours in there. You kind of guess which one, which seven looking guards Tembu comes from. Ten Saten! Ah, spoiled it. But next, we're going to talk actually there's another thing about eating this sushi. So this holiday is about getting luck, but it's most it's now in Japan about eating this sushi, being the big sushi roll. And you have to eat it, not cut up, but as the roll, from the head on. Maruka burisuru is what it's called, or is how you call it the way of eating. It's like eat it from the circle, you eat it from the end in like one big bite. It's like a hot dog. And it's big, so it can be hard to eat like this. So you see lots of kids just like, nom 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 nom. Why? Because if you cut it, you cut the luck inside of it. Like, you cut the shit to the seven lucky gods. Like, oh, how could you do such a horrible thing? Even though you're going to eat it and cut it with your mouth, but, you know, what? And this is Engi, it's sort of this Japanese sort of beliefs in star signs, like Chinese mythology. And this comes with, with the seven signs of the zodiac. Because this year, or well, the year of Chinese year, is the year, what year is it? It's the tiger. So, when you eat the sushi, the sushi roll, the ehomaki, you have to face the sign of the zodiac to get the best luck. So this is how it is. <laughs> like, it's getting crazy, right? This sushi, it's like, you think it's basic sushi, like, no, you gotta put the right ingredients, you gotta eat it whole, and you gotta eat it facing the sign of the zodiac. It's just so... At the moment, it's the year of the tiger, 2022. So you gotta north, north, east. You gotta face north, north, east to eat it correctly, to get all the good luck <laughs> from the sushi. Hmm. It's got all the luck inside of it, all wrapped up. And you don't, you don't eat it this way. Well, the demons could come to your family. Ooh. <laughs> so yesterday when I ate my sushi, or oh, my ehomaki I made myself. I didn't do that. No, I cut it up because it was kind of a mess. So I'm not gonna have a lucky Leah now. Oh no, how sad. But looking up on this is quite a fun culture. And next year, I think we're gonna do it all right. We're gonna make it perfectly. We're gonna eat it right. Next year, the sign of the I can't remember. But we're gonna face it the right way, and it's gonna be a fun time. So. If you come to Japan and want to experience Setsubon, this will be a good reference to listen to so you can do it right and get all the luck. And it's also really fun to make these sushi. Like, making sushi yourself is so much fun than actually buying it. Like, ehomaki is quite expensive in the shops. And, well, sushi making yourself is really cheap. It's just rice, like, seaweed, and just cheap ingredients, really, when you think about it. Like, making yourself for your friends and family is a good way to spend this season, and I think it's the best way, but from the Weather News Anchored, only 8% of Japanese people do that, it's a bit sad. But if you're in a foreign country, you could make this as well, because you could probably get your hands on rice, probably get some sushi paper from Amazon. And then while all the ingredients, maybe you won't be able to get ango or kampyo, but you can get your hands on tofu, you can make it yourself. You won't be able to get tembu, but you can get some pink stuff, put that in, and make it your own. Make it your own sushi, make it your own luck, and well, I know a good time gets to get with friends and family. Making sushi is extremely fun, and I recommend you give it a try. 
So we're going to end today's episode of Ginger Point Podcast there. And if you like this episode, anything about Japan, and you want to let me know, please, well, comment anywhere you find this podcast. Or send me an email at jobfitjapan.com. We'll see you next time in Ginger Pan. Hi, I'm going to talk about the kids. I'm going to talk about the kids. I'm going to talk about the kids. I'm going to talk about the kids.